I don't know if I want to do this video or not. I guess if you're watching it, you know, you'll know that I decided to go ahead and do it. I uh, Today is Monday the 10th of July. It's uh, kind of a cl cloudy, overcast day today. I am Don Shader, and this is the Grumpy Old Gringo Channel. I'll get started on this crap as soon as I come back. Hey! Oh, rocket cheek. Roger. Hello there. So I got a little few things to talk about. I want to talk about some things, you know. I guess we can call this a TAT, a this and that. I haven't done a TAT in a while, so it's time for one. I got a few things I want to talk about. I want to just give you a little quick update about the the ticket situation. I ran into somebody this morning, a friend of mine, the, the wife of, of uh, a professional here in in Monta. Um, she's had four of these speeding tickets, like the ones that I got, where it's impossible that they belong to her, just like it's impossible that the ones that I got actually belong to me and I you know we talked about it briefly and just to give you an update I had a meeting with my David via Roel my attorney and which I am going to start supporting uh, in as every way as much as I can in support of him and his firm in the future and everything is a goal for getting these things dismissed where we're, I presented everything that I can present as a defense like video that shows that I'm here at home when these tickets were uh, allegedly you know written I guess electronically you know when I suppose it was caught speeding in this area that I don't even live in but anyway so I, I feel confident that we're going to get through this and they're going to be dismissed thrown out of court uh, my friend told me this morning that all four of hers have been dismissed, and David was, was responsible for getting all four of them dismissed. He's a very good lawyer, and so that's that's the way that goes. Okay. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about is I, I saw this is kind of related to. Well, no. Before I go into that, I want to talk about Gringo visas for a minute. I, I every once in a while I get an email from somebody complaining about. Gringo visas, not responding, not answering emails or returning phone calls. Every time I get one of these emails, I immediately forward it to Maite. Maite is the owner. That's Maite Duran. She's the owner of Gringo visas. And I, I, I have to admit that this last one that I sent to her this week, I was uh, not the nicest person that I normally, normally am. I, I know that some of you may find it really difficult to believe, but I can I can actually be pretty nice pretty nice guy. When I'm promoting somebody here on my channel and telling all you people, hey, you know, use Gringo Visas, use Top Dental, use Echo Assist, you know, I, I expect those people to perform flawlessly and to give you the best service that they can give you for the money you're paying them. And if they don't, then I don't want to support them. Maite, if you're watching this video, I, I, I owe you an apology. I hope that you understand that, you know, I'm not mad at you. I will continue to support you and will continue to recommend you, okay? Folks, if you send me an email and tell me that they don't answer, and then I forward it to Maite, and she sends me back physical evidence where I can see where she responded to you, shame on you. Don't do that to me, okay? If you don't like the service you're getting, pick up your damn phone and call them, okay? And if that don't work, then then write to me. Don't don't write to me and tell me that they're not responding to you. I had one this last week. This lady wrote to me and said she doesn't respond. Has this, this happened to you? Blah blah blah. You know. And then I wrote, I kind of yelled at my team and sent it to her and told her this got to stop. And then she writes back very calmly and it shows me where she responded to this lady the very next day. You know who I'm talking to, the subscriber that wrote to me. I'm talking to you and you know who you are. 
and I'm not going to mention your name, and I'm, you know, and I will also continue to support you too with peace and love. But don't tell me that you're not getting any response from her when she turns around and shows me the email that she sent to you the very next day. Uh, maybe you didn't get the email. I don't know. We're not going to turn this into a debate. But folks, I, I run into this a lot. People complain about you know either a gringo visa or complain about anybody, some service that I refer to you. And then I find out later that, well, it's not them, it's you that didn't do your heart, okay? Or you're, you're exaggerating or something, okay? So anyway, that's enough on that. I still, the person that you know who I'm talking to, I still love you. And like I say, I, I will still help you, okay? I saw something this morning in the uh, Coinca High Life. It's an online newspaper that I read every day I get it and the headline was Latin America's least peaceful countries Colombia and Venezuela are the least peaceful countries not only in Latin America but in the world according to the Institute for Economics and Peace the countries share the 140th ranking the lowest in the Institute scale the Institute rates Iceland and Denmark the most peaceful countries in the world Uruguay, right here in South America, is ranked safest in Latin America. I'd like to go see that place. Due to increasing drug trafficking violence, Ecuador is 97th in the ranking. In its comments, the Institute notes that Ecuador is a tale of two countries, with most of the violence occurring in five coastal provinces, while crime rates show only small increases in the mountain and Amazon regions. So... People talk about violence in Ecuador and crime and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I still, I don't, I mean, yeah, there's crime here. But, you know, it's far worse than the United States. I mean, you know, I'm not going to get into a big debate about it. I feel safe. Okay. Now, the main thing I want to talk to about, I got a comment in response to the video that I did last week, which was actually, it was an update about, the traffic tickets, and this person, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read it and I quote. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna quote the the user's name out of respect for him or her, but I hope it's okay that I ask this here because I don't know where else to ask it. What's your thoughts on American citizens in Ecuador advocating for more guns there? Here we go with this gun thing again. The United States now has more guns, 446 million, than citizens. 339, 331.9 million. It's, that's pure insanity, and it's one of the reasons we have had 330 mass shootings as of July 4th, 2023. And that's just since January 2023. I understand. I don't see why anyone would escape this country, and I do consider escaping, only to move to another country just like it, crime-wise. Well, I'm going to stop right there and, and, and say, don't you dare compare crime in the United States to crime in Ecuador. Folks, it's not the same. The crime that happens here is petty crime. It's petty crime, people trying to feed their family. The violent crimes, the shootings and stuff, happen between the gangsters and the, and the cartel. i got to be careful about what I say here because I don't want to be a victim or a target. But, you know, we don't have mass shootings here. And people coming here from the United States, I guarantee you, I didn't escape. I didn't escape from the United States to come here. I came here for the cost of living and for an adventure and because I'm still fairly young and I want to travel and see the world. Don't, please, get off this idea that people are escaping the United States to come to Ecuador and have to deal with crime like they did in the United States. It's not happening, folks. Come on down. I'll show you how to be safe here. Even here, even here in Monta, it's common sense stuff, all right? I'm really hoping Ecuador doesn't turn into a mini America. Well, me too. I don't think it'll ever happen. And I have personal reasons for saying that, and I'm not going to quote it here on this channel. Maybe I should do another one of those videos, the Brutal Truth videos. Maybe I should do a Brutal Truth 2 video. Maybe I think I will. I think I'll start 
working on that. And that's one of the things I'll talk about. The reason I ask, I was randomly watching Ecuador expat videos in my YouTube recommendation list the other day, and two of the videos wanted citizens to have guns in Ecuador because they live in the Vilcabamba, Loja area. Have any thoughts on that issue? I, you know, I don't want to turn this into a debate about guns, all right? My own personal feelings, I think everybody in the United States should have a gun on their hip. Why? Because there's 441 million people carrying guns. But, you know, be a responsible gun owner. Get training and get licensed and get, you know, know what you're doing if you have to use it. I saw a video the other day of an 82-year-old man being gunned down in, was it New York City? The guy, the, the punk asshole on the motorcycle, scooter, driving it. What, Guy wasn't even man enough to ride a real motorcycle. He was driving a little, looked like a little Vespa or some little scooter. And, and he, he took a shot at somebody and missed him and knocked the glass out of the window. And this old man turns to look to see. And all this is on video. And boom, the guy shoots him in the back like a coward. The poor old man didn't know what hit him. He turned around, he stumbled, he fell down. He's bleeding out the front, bleeding out the back. And that's the guy that died. So, yeah, it's horrible. I mean, but, but, you know, what if there had been a CCW nearby? What if there had been somebody armed and, and trained? What if? Don't turn this into a debate. Don't, don't leave your comments to yourselves. Don't, don't get on my, on my comments and start, you know, telling me, you know, that I'm wrong and debating this issue, and especially in reference to this, Oh man, getting shot down like a wild animal. I think every one of you should have a gun. Now, here in Ecuador, no, I don't think that way. Why? Because you don't see people walking around with guns. What you don't see won't hurt you. Vilcabamba, there's been a lot of talk about Vilcabamba and that whole Vilcabamba area. The talk that I've always heard is that there's a lot of indigenous people there that don't want foreigners on their land. And there's a lot of violence, a lot of violence. I don't know about a lot of violence, but there's violence. I personally know of two violent incidents that cost two people their lives in the Vilcabamba area. Would I live in Vilcabamba? Hell no. No, I wouldn't. But I don't think, you know, the, the, the lasso issued a decree last year, or this year actually, you know, stating that, you know, guns are going to be legal and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, you know, folks, I don't know that that's going to happen. I don't know that anybody knows because now we're right in the middle of this election season. The last one's not going to run for president again. We've got a new president, interim president coming in in August, and they'll be in office for a year and a half. Who knows what's going to happen in the next year and a half? I don't think gun rights is going to be a top issue. I really don't. I'm more concerned about the drugs that are getting out of this country and getting into the streets of the United States and other European countries and North American countries and killing people. You know, but that's just my own personal opinion and my opinion and 20 bucks won't even get you a cup of coffee even in Ecuador. So that's what I had to say about that, folks. I may end up having to turn off comments because I know this is going to open up a shit storm of a debate about guns, but that's the way I feel about it. As far as guns here in Ecuador are concerned, I don't think you need to worry about it. And I don't think you need to worry about this place turning into a mini America. There's not that many Americans here. There's 17 million people here. And what, there's less than 40,000 expats from worldwide. I, you know, I don't know what the exact number is, but it's a, not very many. I don't think Ecuadorian people even want to carry guns. Most of them can't even afford it. Hell, we got cops here that carry guns with no bullets because they can't afford to buy their own shells, their own ammunition. So I, th I think there's other things to worry about, okay? If you like this video, please subscribe. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, bite me, okay? And I say that with peace and love. I'll see you on the next one, folks. Ciao, ciao.
I don't care how much you cry. You're not getting no damn pop cup. You got snacks at the house. They want to charge you two damn dollars for a cup of whipped cream. You got snacks at the house. I... Yes, may I have a Betsy hot chai with a double shot blonde espresso made with oat milk, no water? Okay, what else can I for you? Else? And a puff cup. Okay. Thank you. Alright, it's gonna be 9.04. <laughs> At least it's 9.04. That's Beyonce's birthday.